XXX Tentacion was an icon, a voice for a generation of teenagers going through troubled times. His death in 2018 sent airwaves through social media and has always been met with controversy and conspiracy theory. Legal proceedings started last year, but this past week, his alleged killer finally snitched and name dropped this famous rapper. Life and death of XXX Tentacion. Before we get into the murder and legal proceedings of XXX Tentacion, let's take a brief history of his life, rise to the top, and a short time in the spotlight. Jase Onfroy, professionally known as XXX Tentacion, had a rocky childhood, coupled with a slow and steady rise from an underground cult following to the top of the Billboard Hot 100. He was born on January 23rd, 1998, to parents Dwayne and Cleopatra in Plantation, Florida. Doctors noticed he was born with a hole in his heart, but this didn't affect his development well whatsoever, showing how he had been a fighter right from birth. His father, Dwayne, had multiple affairs with women, leaving Cleopatra to take care of X all on her own. X was living with his mom alone in Pompano Beach while she was working as a stripper to pay the bills. His formative years were marked by a single pivotal event, an event that fueled his anger and depression that would remain with him till death. When he was seven years old, one of the drug slingers who was seeing his mother came by the house and was having a violent argument. This was apparently a common theme in the household. X came out of his room and he heard dishes tossed and shattered in the kitchen. The argument quickly grew out of hand. The man got physical with X's mom. X insisted that the man would have killed his mom, but he quickly got in the way, grabbed a piece of broken glass from the broken dishes, jumped on top of the man, biting him as hard as he could as well as cutting him and poking him with the glass shard. This was the first major violent eruption X had shown, and it was essentially a point of no return for him. After this incident, his mother Cleopatra tried to pay more attention to X to make sure that behavior would not repeat itself. I'm sorry, but you can guess what happens next. The behavior did repeat itself. X continued his deviation behavior and one day he was stopped by officers one night who found 21 grams of weed on him. He was indicted and charged with a felony as a youth. He was sentenced to one month in juvenile detention and a mandatory six months in behavioral correctional facility. This is where he met Stokely and his fascination for rap with Kickstart. And one of their friends, Aaron, had a microphone and a laptop with recording software on it. They recorded songs and uploaded them to the streaming service SoundCloud. The group was starting to get recognized and in late 2015, X dropped his biggest hit at the time, titled Look At Me. Although the song didn't chart the billboard, his name started circulating the underground and a cult-like following started. A 2017 beef with Drake would inevitably take his publicity to a new level. The same year, he would take the 10th and final spot on the 2017 Double XL freshman list. And in October 2017, he signed a record deal worth well over $6 million with Capitol Records. His new album titled Question Mark dropped on March 25th, 2018. And he was being dubbed as the voice of the new generation. But on June 18th, 2018, like a comet blazing across the evening sky, he went out too soon. Who shot X? On that fateful day, X went to a bank and withdrew money before heading to Reva Motorsports Superstore in Deerfield Beach. After withdrawing money, he was closely trailed by a dark-colored Dodge Journey SUV, which contained his eventual assailants, including Diedrich Williams, Robert Allen, Michael Boatwright, and Trayvon Newsom. Diedrich Williams was able to recognize Onfroy's car on the day of the murder, likely because Williams had been in a probation office at the same time as X in January 2018. According to the officials, Williams spotted X's car and called his colleagues, saying that they should go into the superstore that X had entered to confirm that it was really him. X arrived at Reaver Motorsports Superstore and entered with his uncle. Security tapes showed that Diedrich Williams and Robert Allen tailed X inside the store and casually walked right past him as he was browsing motorcycles. They were seen coming into Reva Motorsports and buying two black masks. X left the superstore about 30 minutes later, entered his black BMW, and drove away from the store. The assailant's SUV drove in front of X's car, blocking him in while Newsom and Boatwright allegedly stepped out of the vehicle and demanded X's belonging. A brief tussle ensued in which Boatwright is alleged to have taken X's Louis Vuitton bag and Newsom stole his chain. Amid the struggle, X's uncle fled the car while Newsom ran back to the suspect's vehicle. Despite the robbery being as good as done, Boatwright allegedly walked back back to X's vehicle, grabbed his rifle, looked X in the eyes, and fired six shots at his neck, effectively killing him. Newsom and Boatwright then took the Louis Vuitton bag from X's car and ran back to their black SUV. The murder occurred east of the city of Parkland in Florida where X was residing at the time. The paramedics rushed him to the nearby Broward Health North and were able to briefly revive a pulse, but it was never regained. X was initially reported to be in fatal condition following the shooting, but was later confirmed dead by Broward County Sheriff's Office. Shortly after the death, of XXX Tentacion, the Broward County Sheriff's Office offered a $3,000 bounty for information leading to the apprehension of any of the four suspects. Just two days after, the first suspect was arrested. The Broward County Sheriff's Office arrested 22-year-old Diedrich Williams in connection with X's murder. He was charged with dangerous and depraved first-degree murder, robbery with a firearm, and operating a vehicle without a valid driver's license. The remaining
remaining three arrests followed in the coming months. About a week after the murder, 22-year-old Robert Allen was named as a suspect in the case and was later arrested on July 26. On the 5th of July, 22-year-old Michael Boatwright was arrested on separate drug-related charges, but on July 10th, Boatwright was met by officials while in jail and was presented with his warrant for premeditated first-degree murder. Officers said Boatwright had searched for accessory to murder and XXS and Tashian on his phone's web browser after the murder. Talk about not cleaning up your browser history after committing a murder rookie mistake. Police determined that Boatwright was the one who gave the six fatal shots to XXX and Tashiyan. The four men were later indicted by a Broward County grand jury, each of whom was charged with first degree murder with a firearm and armed robbery. The State of Florida versus the Assailants the trial of Michael Boatwright, Trayvon Newsom, and Dedrick Williams started on February 7, 2023, nearly five years after the death of John C. Onfroy, and if convicted, all would face life in prison without the possibility of parole. Hold up, that was just three names. But shouldn't there be four suspects? Yes, because on August 12, 2022, Robert Allen decided to snitch and reach a plea deal with the prosecution. He testified against the other three defendants and pleaded guilty to the lesser conviction of second-degree murder, thus avoiding a potential death sentence. His sentencing is scheduled for February 24th, 2023, and he could be in prison for life. Another suspect in the case did not want to snitch, but tried other means to escape trial. Michael Boatwright and his attorneys began to claim that he was incompetent to stand trial and he requested that psychological experts be appointed to determine his legal competence. To his dismay, he was declared mentally competent to stand trial. <laughs> Brother, you did the crime, now you must do the time. The second day of the trial, February 8th, 2023, featured accomplice Robert Allen's testimony against the other three defendants. Before the snitching began, Allen categorically outlined his relationship with all three suspects, stating that he had been closest with Dedrick Williams out of the three defendants and had been companions with him for close to five years. He also stated that they basically hung out almost every day. With regard to Trayvon Newsom, Allen stated that he had been living with him for two or three weeks at the time of the murder. He mentioned that he knew Michael Boatwright for about two years at the time of the murder. And like Williams, he also had seen Boatwright almost every day. While under oath, Allen corroborated the entire prosecution's account of the murder. He shed light on the planning of the killing as well as how they shared the $50,000 they stole from X. Allen stated that he initially told the others that the robbery was a bad idea because he and Williams had already been spotted on surveillance at Reva Motorsports. Boatwright and Newsom developed cold feet and became hesitant to go forward with the crime. Williams, the mastermind of the plan, asked the two if they were scared, and Boatwright replied, all right, we gonna get him. Allen stated that Boatwright and Newsom were told to be the gunman because he and Williams were already seen on security footage. Shots are fired. Who shoots the shots that are fired? Michael Boatwright. And who does he shoot? Triple F. Allen confirmed that it was the plan to rob and murder X once they had him trapped with their SUV. They made off with X's Louis Vuitton bag containing $50,000. Allen also broke down how the stolen $50,000 was allegedly shared amongst the four co-defendants, saying he only received $5,000 while Boatwright, Dedrick Williams, and Trayvon Newsom each got $15,000. He stated that he was not supposed to get any amount because he had the smallest role in the robbery and murder, but Boatwright pleaded and insisted that Allen get some of the money since he was there with him. On their way to a car wash, Allen, Boatwright, and and Newsom learned of X's confirmed death status. Allen stated that he and Newsom were silent and that Boatwright decided to turn the music up afterwards. Later on, Boatwright accidentally crashed the SUV and they all fled the scene. All four later met up at Boatwright's house, with Boatwright insisting that Allen needed to go back to the scene to get the murder vehicle. He totally refused, and the duty of retrieving the murder vehicle fell to Newsom and Boatwright. Drizzy called up to testify. After an eventful second day of trial, the third day sent even bigger waves on the social media space. Multiple Grammy-winning Canadian rapper Drake was ordered to testify on February 27th and will be charged with contempt of court if he does not appear. Allegations of Drake's ties to X's murder come from five-year-old conspiracy theories about both rappers feuding with one another. People online have pointed out suspicious lyrics in various Drake songs that could be hinting at X's death. In Drake's 2018 track, I'm Upset, the lyrics, SMS, Triple X, that's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. Other lyrics from the 2022 track, On BS, by Drake and 21 Savage, read as follows. If he held his tongue on that live, he'd be alive again. Both lyrics allude to the fact that X was shot in the neck and also famously dissed Drake on Instagram, particularly through Instagram Live. On February 13th, 2023, the fifth day of the trial, Drake's lawyer appeared in court requesting a cancellation of the requested deposition. Whether you're a fan of XXX and Tashian or just a hip hop enthusiast in general, this ongoing trial has been a long awaited one and it feels as though there's a lot left to be uncovered. So many questions to be answered. Will Drake testify? Can we trust the words of the star witness will justice prevail over the assailants we'll find out very soon if you enjoyed this video check out our other awesome videos on the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time